cannabis stocks, and CEO interviews brought to you by Rich TV Live. Well, what's going on, everybody? Aaron with the Partridge Capital, and we're here with Rich TV Live and Investing Hustler. What's up, boys? What's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustler. Good to see you guys. Nice to be in a collab with you three. You two? <laughs> yes, our last collab. And, and Rich, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing today? We're good. We're good. And there's no snow as of yet. How's the weather in BC? Oh, man. It's beautiful. Sunshine. Guys, man. It's about 10. Oh, so lucky. So lucky. Toronto, it's crazy over here. So anyways, we're going to touch on a really different topic today, something that I feel like a lot of people, you know, will appreciate us talking about, and it's going to help a lot of people. So let's let Rich tell us what the topic's about, and uh, then we'll get into it. Well, obviously, we've had a pretty tough week this week. Uh, looks like we're having kind of a slight red day today, and we've had, so that will be four out of five days that are red, and I believe six out of the last seven days in the cannabis sector are red. And globally, we are seeing a lot of red as well. So what we wanted to talk about today is how to deal with red days, how to deal with stocks when they're down, how to deal with red days, and what <clears> to think about as an investor when we're having a downturn or a trend reversal. Yeah, so I mean, uh, for me, for example, of course, like whenever it goes up, it, sometimes it'll come down and you have those, like you just said, you've had those red days, even red weeks, like I said, red weeks are probably the most depressing or when you get four to five days where it's red, what do you do? Do you get down and out? Do you say you're going to sell all your shares? <laughs> that's not, that's not the best strategy. Um, but for me, I don't know. It's just a matter of out of the house. Like I love to go to the gym. I love to read a book, do something to get your mind off it. That's just for the short term. Also, you know, Maybe you're a full-time investor, but if you're not a full-time investor, start up a new project. You know, do something. Think, think to yourself, oh, how am I going to be more successful in the business that I'm already in? You know, like for me, for example, <clears throat> I'll, I'll go and think of a, a creative video to make or I'll work on a new program or I'll just do something that's productive and is a different, maybe a different stream of income for me. Very good idea. That's true. Well, I think, I think a lot of it has to do with experience because when I started investing and I had like a red day on the, before the weekend, the whole weekend I would just be depressed. I would let it get to me. I'd be down. Uh, and it would affect me and the people around me. My, my mood just sucked. And then over time I learned to realize that it shouldn't affect your life because it, it, at the end of the day, your stock will go up if you're invested into a good company. So with experience, Eventually, you stop being depressed because of those red days. And on top of that, it's good to get your mind distracted. Just like you said, sometimes you got to just go to the gym. You got to go work on another project. I, I'll, I'll start posting some ads for sales. I'll, I'll, I'll work on a video related to something else. Uh, go hang out with a girl. Go keep your mind distracted or just have a positive mindset. Because if, if you're in your head, you're just thinking, oh, I lost this money. Uh, my life sucks, this and that. Um, just remember, at the end of the day, you don't lose money until you sold those shares at a, at a loss. So you, you didn't lose nothing. The only thing that happened was the, the value of your stock went down for that very moment. So don't let that one moment ruin your day, your weekend, your week. Don't, don't, let, it ruin, don't let it ruin you. So that's pretty much that's my experience. How about you, Rich? Yeah, I've been in this game for a long time. And I've been watching cannabis stocks when they first started four years ago. You could not deposit a cannabis stock anywhere. No bank would take it. No brokerage house would take it in Canada or the United States. I watch Canopy Growth, Aurora Cannabis, Organigram, Afria, and Kronos Group. Those were the first five big ones, which I talked about two years ago, go from under a dollar all the way to the prices that they are today. So I find it a little bit comical when people are panicking <clears throat> because I think long-term. And when I think over the last four years, all of these cannabis stocks for the most part are up thousands of percent. Okay. Yep. So realistically, they've been a huge success and the entire stock market as a whole over the last few years has been up dramatically. So 
If you've been losing in the markets, you really got to ask yourself, how are you trading? What are you trading in? What are you investing in? I choose to think like Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett tries to invest in a company that he sees will be a powerhouse or a monopoly in 20 years. I believe Aurora Cannabis, Afria, Cannabis Growth, these are three of the biggest companies in the cannabis sector that will only get bigger. Now their prices are totally out of whack because they're trading at price to earning ratios that are unjustified. Even CanTrust yesterday had a massive day up 30%, but they came back today like 8% last time I looked yeah. because they're trading at 38 times revenue. So when you're trading at 38 times revenue and the street on Wall Street and Bay Street wants to see six to 15 times revenue, you know that you're in a little bit of a bubble. But the yeah. reality is the bubble is a reality. These prices are a reality. So if you want to play in today's market, you have to know that it's very volatile. There's a lot of highs and there's a lot of lows. And yeah. all of these stocks in the cannabis sector are overvalued. They're trading at price to earning ratios mm -hmm. that are not justified. Because of that, they can go down at any time. However, the hype is real, and because of that, they can also go up at any time. Because last time I looked, Tilray did hit a did hit three hundred. I saw it with my own eyes, and Canopy Growth did hit seventy dollars. I saw it with my own eyes, almost a hundred. So yeah. we've seen some of these stocks do crazy things, but they didn't stay there. So do not buy stocks at fifty-two week highs. Try to buy them at fifty-two week lows. Buy the red, sell the green, and think long term. And then you won't be concerned about down days. Yeah. Exactly. No, I think that's great. I have that long-term mentality. Because uh, even I, at one point, I was holding on to Canopy at $36. And then Canopy had that downfall. And I, I could have let me let it get to me and sell my shares at a loss. But then you've seen Canopy go all the way up to $70, $73. So it does happen. You just mm -hmm. got to think long term hold long term and and sell try to time it sell at 52 weeks high 100 percent and and honestly what uh all the time the one thing that always that uh warren buffett always says is when you go to a mcdonald's and you see burgers are on sale what do you do you buy more yep so this is the time to lower your cost average so that you're buying your stocks at 52 week lows and when they do explode later this year or early next year or sometime next year or in the future you will be rewarded handsomely for your patience. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, it is definitely patience. I mean, like if you look at other industries that are growing like five to ten percent a year, well, okay, maybe you buy a cannabis stock and it goes up or down twenty percent from the time you buy it. You're down twenty percent. Oh, but then we have a two month run and you're now up seventy percent. So it's like, yeah, you just gotta be patient. That's what it really comes down to. If you're investing in a good company that's going to be around in the future. You know, if you made the right decision, you can't get down when your stock's down 25% because the next couple of weeks it could be back up and higher than that. Right. So it's volatility. You need to be comfortable with the volatility of a new sector like this. But at the same time, you, we, we have the opportunity to capitalize on growth that other industries just won't, won't see. Yeah, and like for me, like the only time I'm selling is when I'm up 10% or more. So when I'm down, yep. I'm like, okay, close the computer. Let me go enjoy my day. I'm going to go find other ways to make money. I'm going to go hang out with my kids. I'm going to go hang out with my family, my friends. There's a lot of other things to do every day than just stare at the screen. So for yep. me, when it's down, that's when I'm buying. When it's in the green, I'm thinking about selling. If it's not in the green, close my computer, go enjoy my day. I mean, I'm not going to let the stock market affect my attitude. <clears throat> yeah. Life is too short to worry about one investment. I'm very diversified. I'm invested in cryptos, stocks, and real estate. I want yeah. to be more diversified. I want to get heavily into commodities, maybe buy some oil and gas now that it's so cheap, maybe buy some gold. So there's so many things I want to do to be well diversified so that when the markets do go down, it's really nothing more than a buying opportunity. Yeah. Look at it like that then you actually will learn to be excited on down days because those are the days where you should be buying. For sure. No, I mean, like, I love commodities. To be honest, when I first started to purchase capital, I was way more focused on commodities and nothing to do with cannabis. Like, like a little bit of cannabis, but, like, 
I've always been a commodity investor. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. The past five years have been super brutal. <clears throat> Oil, gas, gold's been okay. Physical bullion, but yeah. holy smokes. But, but I think now is a great time, right? Like they just got beat up like crazy. But if you were investing in oil and gas two years ago, uh, gold or in cannabis stocks, who do you think would have come out with the biggest gains? <laughs> That's pretty obvious. So yeah, obviously- but the thing with gold, I feel like inflation grows at a faster rate than gold does. So I don't know. Gold, I feel like gold is just like one of those safe havens, but it's like you don't, you can't really make much money from gold. It's just like, it's a physical asset compared to uh, stocks. And, um, and speaking of that, like what, what do you guys think is a good investment outside of marijuana? Like, what do you think the future of bubble? Good one. Or what do you, what do you guys think? Like outside of marijuana, what, what do you think would be a good investment? Well, I got two, uh, lithium and vanadium. I've been looking into lithium stocks and vanadium stocks. I'm very interested in them. I know vanadium yeah. is a word you're probably not used to hearing. Uh, yep. it's another precious metal that has grown by 10 X in the last few years and has huge upside. So look into vanadium stocks and look into lithium stocks. So much, so much potential. <laughs> and yeah, why, like- why though? Why, why lithium? Why do you think it's the future? Because batteries. yeah, lithium batteries. We look at yeah. Tesla and we look at electric cars and electric cars are the future. And if you believe in the future, of electric cars and an industry that's trending lithium yep. is the property that is utilized in 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 creating electric car batteries it is it is it is needed so the companies that we've talked about like standard lithium and standard yep. lithium i've talked about quite a bit and i'm telling you it is going to explode because what they do is they extract lithium in hours where everybody else that's in the lithium industry it takes them years to extract lithium no, yeah, that, that's one industry I was going to say. Electric cars, I think, are the future. And, and maybe even AI. Well, we or, have the cars. We have a car. Yeah. <laughs> or, or even prosthetic limbs. I feel like they're, they're starting to advance. That could be something um, to look into. But I don't know any companies that are developed. Do you know any companies <coughs> that are into prosthetic limbs or, or things like that? I haven't looked into that, no. Yeah, that's something I'd want to look into. How about you, Aaron? I've got one good sector. This is more of an old school sector and it is real estate, but I'm very bullish on retirement REITs and long-term care REITs because I just feel like, you know, with the baby boomers going into retirement, getting older in their 60s, 70s, the next 10 to 20 years, that industry is going to boom because, but the company and the REITs have to be run right. I mean, like you can't just invest in any retirement home, privately owned retirement home, you need those, uh, I forget what the standard is, but if a company owns those top quality retirement homes, I feel like that's going to be a good REIT and a good real estate investment for the next 10 years. Well, Just for the simple supply and demand fact. Real estate is really big. And the reason I like real estate and you combine it with cannabis, yep. is because if you think about it, now that it's legal, they need places to grow. So yep. people that owning these properties, farms, commercial yep. spaces, residential properties that they're growing in are able to rent out their properties for, I've heard four to times the rental income. Uh, so think about that as an investor or maybe even a commercial real estate investor that's thinking, Oh, let's open up a REIT and let's strictly rent out space to growers. And we'll be able to make, four times the rental income and be able to pay down and pay down our loans and mortgages if they have them and be able to cash flow like crazy and be able to pay back their shareholders dividends out of the cash flow that's coming in from the yep. revenue generating cannabis companies. This is talking about utilizing a growing industry to maximize earning potential. Yeah. No, real estate is great. If you get into the right, sectors i think yeah for sure i've always loved real estate though and like owning investment properties too that's it's work don't get me wrong it's work but it's worth it yeah well i think properties right now are overvalued don't you think well depends uh, on 
from in Toronto. It depends on where in Canada you are. They are in Vancouver. That's for sure. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Thing. Same here in Toronto. in Toronto. But if you go to Halifax or the East Coast, you can buy a five bedroom house for 250 grand. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I actually own a house in Saskatchewan. I'm pretty sure they're still cheap out there. Yeah, but Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, you know, Saskatchewan has the highest per capita earnings in, in all of Canada. The really? Saskatchewan are rich, and people yeah. don't know this. But yeah, they're yeah, they, very rich. They're, they're per capita. The people in Saskatchewan have more net worth than anywhere else in Canada. That's awesome. I can believe it. A lot of people go out there just to work. That's why I rent yeah. out rooms in the house. Most of the people are, are working class citizens. Correct. And the, like Vancouver has the highest net worth because of the real estate here. But yeah. I don't believe it's it's main, I don't believe it's a lot of people in Vancouver. I think a lot of that money is 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 international investors. Because you can't even qualify for a mortgage now here for a house unless you're making like something like unless you're making over two hundred and fifty grand a year in salary, you will not qualify for a mortgage anymore. What? It's crazy. You can't get a mortgage out here. You can't. Like I got friends. Forced to rent. I got friends that like are like got good high paying jobs and they're telling me like, Rich, I can't. And they got like multiple houses and they're like, I can't get another house. I'm like, you got a hundred grand a year job. Your wife has a hundred grand a year job. Yeah, I didn't qualify. I'm like, what is going on? Like this is out of control. That's nuts. But they're trying to buy a million dollar house, right? Oh, okay, okay. So you can qualify if you want to buy a half a million dollar house. But if you're in Vancouver, if you want to buy in downtown, there is no half a million dollar houses. You no, know? there's like one to two million, right? Or one and a half to two million. At least two or three million. So it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. So you don't even qualify. Like nobody qualifies unless you're elite or you're rich or you're buying it cash or you're putting like 50% down, like a massive. Yeah, yeah. Sell your whole house and put the whole house down as a down payment. Crazy. So yeah, you guys can see this is a video of me in the Dominican Republic. I'm going yeah, to I was looking at that. Yeah, I'm cool. going. I got a villa there. That's my that's my hood. That's uh, Susua Beach. Uh, I'm actually walking to the beach right there from from my villa, and uh, there you can see all the shops and different. That's things. cool. Yeah, it's super cool, man. People having fun. They're good people. Uh, how old were you? You look young there. This was last year. Really? Yeah, this is last year. Oh man, it must be. I don't know. You look I'll super young. Soon. When you go to the beach, it makes you young, man. It takes hey, you. Yeah. It's rich. It's rich in vacay mode. Yeah. 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 Rich is in vacay mode. He sheds fifteen years. I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm gonna, be there, <laughs> like, I'm gonna be there in like uh, less than two months. Damn, that's awesome. You're gonna wait. When are you going again? January twelfth to the 29th. Yeah, you're gonna be there like a week. I'll get back. And then you'll be there like a week after. So it's going to be awesome stuff for our channels. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited. I can't wait. I'll be making a lot of videos from there. So this is what I do when the markets are down. I buy more and I go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it, hopefully when you come back, they're all up and you can sell. Like, enjoy your money. Got to enjoy it. Exactly. Yeah. You're used to making money if you're not enjoying it. Exactly. Money's just a tool. It, it no, can't it's true. You when you're gone. So you might as well enjoy it every single minute. Like I own a villa in the Dominican and I love it. And I bought that cash and it was because of stocks and stocks. How much did you pay for it? If you don't mind. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars us. Huh. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't cheap. It's worth about, it's worth about, you know, half a million us right now. It's a good investment. Nice. I paid, I paid a little more than half of that. It's gone up now. Um, you know, I had to work and everything, probably about 350,000 us all in. But it's worth about 500 right now. And yeah, man, but it's it's nice place. It's a compound. It's huge. It's a 10,000 square foot property. So Damn. it's got a 15,000 gallon pool, 10 man jacuzzi, outside bar, inside, you know, all stainless steel appliances, everything. This is, nice. my, this is my buddy. He's, he's actually Canadian. He's from Vancouver. He has a restaurant there and a bar there. So you see me talking to him, hanging out. So I got people there, like. It's just like Canada. There's tons of Canadians there. There's tons of Americans there. That's so cool. It's tropical. It's tropical. And it's <laughs> sunshine. And this was February of last year. So imagine in February in Toronto, where I'm from and you guys are at right now, it's mm -hmm. freezing, right? Yeah. And then you go there and you're like, look at me. I'm like ready to jump in the water. And I'm like, yo, man, the water's so warm. And that's my happy <laughs> When you're there, you don't even think about the markets. 
Honestly, when I'm there, do you honestly think I'll be thinking about the markets? <laughs> Maybe just I'll a little bit. That's why I want to take a vacation, three month vacation. The yeah. investing hustler wants to do some traveling. Last yeah. year I did three weeks. This year I'm doing two and a half weeks. It's good for the soul. It's good for your mind. Good for your totally. Mind. You get stronger. You physically feel better. Everything. It's different. The cold and the rain. Here we get a lot of rain and clouds. It it takes oh. strength away. You feel it in your bones. You feel weak. You feel tired. You just want to sleep. And then you go out there. You just you're you're like a new person. You're swimming. Yeah. You're walking. You're in the sunshine, and you feel reborn. Yeah, all so that vitamin D. Younger, <laughs> That's great. For sure, for you sure. never, in that photo, you would never know I'm 40. Right no, there. You look, you look like you're in your 20s in that video. I know. Yeah, I know. Seriously, it's, that's, that's awesome. I know. That's awesome. So everybody needs their escape. Everybody needs their escape, yeah. whether it's the villa in the Dominican, whether it's reading a book, hitting the gym, doing whatever you got. This is what you do when it's red. You go to the beach. That's all you got to do. You'll forget about the red real quick. <laughs> I just want to accumulate. I'm going to tell you guys my strategy. I want the top 100 cannabis stocks. I'm going to buy them all. And whenever they go down, I'm just going to buy more. And I'm going to hold them forever until I die. And then I'm going to give them to my kids. And that's it. I'm done. I don't need to worry. I don't need to stress. Let everybody else panic. I'll have a song for you. Don't panic. I'll have a song for you guys soon. It's about don't panic. But I promise you this. When they are red and you are crying, I will be buying. <laughs> I will be selling and that's it that's all anything in between I'll be at the beach that's it <laughs> that's the way you live your life that's why yeah, I look yeah. like this and I'm almost 41 if you want to know it's because of that because look that's the villa you guys want to see the villa that's the villa there's the pool do you, do you have employees there right now working no it's rented it's a rental oh, oh nice that's good yeah, so when I go there, I just book my time, and then it won't be rented that time. And when I leave, it just gets rented. Again. That's sweet. That's so if good. you guys want to go to the Dominican Republic, you want to rent your, your boy Rich's uh, villa in the Dominican Republic. It's Villa 613 Casa Linda. Holler at your boy. How much? How much is rent? Uh, about four to 500 US per night. Per night? Whoa. Yeah, I don't That's play. Great. I don't play. But if you contact your boy, I'll give you guys a deal. I'll give you 50%. Bucks. Off. Just kidding. <laughs> if you travel with me, it's free. Your boy Rich is always free. If you travel, we'll be there, Rich. I'm going with you, Rich. We'll be there. Let's roll. Let's we'll go. We'll do a triple. We'll That'd do a triple crazy. collab from the. We could actually, all do that. All of us go on a vacation and like vlogging the whole. Yes, thing. we'll shoot one of those like one of those inspirational trade and travel videos, like with the like drone okay, and stuff. Right. See the the adult with the kid on the bike, no helmet. That's the Dominican Republic. That's awesome. They got like kid on the bike, no helmet. Everyone just go. No rules. You can drink and drive there. It's crazy. Like nobody cares. Don't drink and drive, people. Yeah, no, I'm not drive. saying you should, but you literally see people drinking and driving. And you're like, what the hell? It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You're like, pull up beside a guy and he's like, hey, it's like, cheers. You're like, what the hell? You speak Spanish, Rich? <laughs> you speak Spanish or no? Uh, no, man, poquito. <laughs> no, poquito. So you need me to for I'll be more. a translator, man. I need a translator, bro. When I go there, I speak fluent. Give me a week. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be in the element, man. I need to be in the element. Comes out. Because I'm Portuguese, yeah. right? But it's just, yeah. it's, deep. it's deep inside. It has to come out. It's come out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's been almost 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to wrap this video up. But, uh, yeah, I hope we could provide some insight and you know a little bit of stress relief for the red days you know think outside the box don't just focus in on the red days because every everything that happens is an opportunity so when it goes down it's an opportunity when it goes up it's an opportunity and make sure to tune into our channels for more info subscribe to rich tv live investing hustler and departures capital don't forget thumbs up and for the outro i'm going to be playing one of rich's tracks so you guys better listen to it. It's going to be sick. Yeah. All right. Don't forget to nope. like, smash that notification bell, and subscribe. Hit it.